So last time we looked at monads as being monoids in a different category than the category of contracts and guarded functions. This was in the category of functors from a category to itself and natural transformations. So where this had two elements of a set and produced one element of a set in a monoid. This had two iterations of a functor and produced one iteration of a functor. And the unit taking no elements of a set and producing one element. Here the monad took no iterations of the functor and produced one iteration of the functor. Um, so it's a very pretty an analogy but it has a terrible API for doing JavaScript programming. So if you look at, for instance, this function here, up to, it expects an integer produces an array of integers. You give me n, I produce 0 up to n minus 1. So for instance, if I'm just running up to 5 here, run that, I get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, suppose I wanted to do this thing from Scala. That is, for every x in up to 5, that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, calculate the array y that's up to x, and then concatenate them all together. This is how I would have to write it in this API. At first, I'd do up to 5. And then I would map up to over that, and then I would flatten it. It's not especially readable as compared to this one. Um, we run it. Oops. Um, there we go. Right, so here, this, this bl blank before the zero is up to zero, then this is up to one, this is up to two, this is up to three, and this is up to four. So I decided to write up some JavaScript that would take an expression that looked roughly like this, and produce an expression that looked like the nested flat maps that we had um, the first time we talked about monet. So here is the for comprehension class, m for monad. It collects a list of pairs. So up here, we'll have a pair of a variable and an expression. And here is another variable and another expression. And then there's a body at the end. So for takes a variable and an expression and just stores that pair in this state here. Yield takes a body and then computes a string that I'm calling desugared. So it maps over the pairs, this function, that says get the expression and wrap it in parentheses. Then use the dot operator. And then if we're on the last one, we use just plain old map. Otherwise, we use flat map. And we flat map a f an anonymous function that takes that one variable. So here, this would be up to 5 dot flat map x, uh, function of x. Return the next thing, and so on and so on until you get to map, and then finally you provide the body. Then you close all your braces, join it all together, and return the string. And then you give this utility function that just lets you avoid using new m.
Now instead of evaluating this, what I'm going to do here is just print the desugared expression. So this says for x in x's and for y in y's yield x times y. That is, pick an element of x and then for each element of y multiply them together. When you're all done, concatenate or flatten the resulting list. So we should get this. But first I'm going to show you what it rewrites to. So x's dot flat map. And we defined flat map in the monad uh, base class and then made array arrays prototype um, inherit from that. So it says x's dot flat map function x return y's dot map function y return x dot y. Now when we eval that x's is going to be in scope right here. Eval grabs the current scope so it can refer, even though I'm using strings here, it can refer to actual variables that are in scope. That's why I didn't just execute um, this stuff directly instead of producing a string to interpret. By producing a string I can then evaluate it and actually get a hold of the variables that are in scope. So when I eval it, um, I get this thing, which is 5, 6, 7 times 1, 5, 6, 7, oops, 5, 6, 7 times 2, and 5, 6, 7 times 3. If we wanted to do um, this thing above with up to, we could say for x in up to 5, y in x yield y. Is that right? Oh, that will get each item of this. Right, I forgot up to here. I should have copied the thing that I wrote. X is up to Y. Great, let me run. There we go. We get the same answer right there. If we did json.stringify we'd get string match exactly the same. Okay, so this lets us use Scala-style for comprehensions in JavaScript.